This video is sponsored by Surfshark. You guys must have heard of Charlotte the Stingray before, right? A Stingray we humans named Charlotte. Charlotte the pregnant Stingray. Charlotte the Stingray. Charlotte the Stingray. Charlotte the Stingray. This California round Stingray was propelled to absolute stardom across all social media platforms, particularly TikTok, since February 2024. Charlotte, who lives in an aquarium in North Carolina in the USA, made headlines after she reportedly became pregnant, despite not having a male Stingray in her tank. This in itself is a pretty rare thing, and of course, people flocked to the aquarium in their thousands, and the social media following for this otherwise unassuming aquarium in Hendersonville skyrocketed. But as time went on, this story got stranger and weirder. Misinformation was flying out of this aquarium left, right, and center, and scientists were literally being blocked from commenting on their social media pages. The physical health and well-being of Charlotte also came into question, and because this story was just so strange, People had a lot of questions, the main one of which was, wait, was this all a scam? I had quite a few of you guys in the comments wanting a video about Charlotte the Stingray, and initially I wasn't going to do it, but then the story just started getting wilder and wilder and wilder, so much so that I just had to do a video on it. Right, okay, let's go back then to September 2023. Charlotte, a California round stingray, had been behaving strangely in her tank, of which contains no male stingrays, but does have a couple of bamboo sharks swimming around. Brenda Raymer, who's a former school teacher, actually owns the aquarium in North Carolina, which is known as the Aquarium and Shark Lab, ECCO. I should point out here, this aquarium is privately owned and is not accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. That's your first little red flag there. After noticing that Charlotte was behaving strangely, the staff later decided that they were going to have Charlotte undergo an ultrasound to see if the reason for this behavior was because she was pregnant. Fast forward to February 2024, aquarium owner Brenda posted on a private forum for aquarium owners describing a science miracle and a once in a lifetime event. It was claimed that Charlotte was pregnant with four pups despite not having any male stingray living with her in her tank. Very rare, but not impossible. Later that week, Brenda would host a now famous Facebook Live event, which consisted of her pointing at grainy ultrasound images. Although during this Facebook Live, she mentioned the theory of Charlotte being impregnated by one of the bamboo sharks. At one point, she literally says, oh my gosh, she had bite marks on her. Sharks bite when they mate. There's a potential that she mated with one of these sharks. And this is the bit where everything started to get a little bit wild. After the press got hold of the story, some media outlets decided to run with the possibly impregnated by a shark version, which if you know anything about these animals, is absolute nonsense. Sharks and rays are separated by millions of years of evolution. Throughout those millions of years, they've diverged so much that they cannot successfully sexually reproduce with one another. It's just not gonna happen. In other words, it's impossible. David Schiffman actually put it quite nicely by saying, it's like comparing humans and snakes. He said, it's like if a human tried to mate with an anaconda, a lot of things would probably happen, but one of those things would definitely not be a half human, half anaconda baby. That is a vile image that has just popped into my head. What a hideous creature that would be. As to exactly why an aquarium owner who owns a few different shark and ray species and is also supposedly an educator of children believed that a shark could impregnate a ray, I have no idea. But that's your second red flag there. It's not great that an aquarium whose supposed role is to educate the public about animals and nature decided to go with that theory, but here we are. So the press went mad and the aquarium seemed to be cheerfully propagating that obvious misinformation. At this point though, the scientific community decided to step in to try and squash those claims because when misinformation is spreading like wildfire, it's usually good to try and put out those flames. A bunch of scientists from different parts of America and around the world stressed the fact that the shark impregnating Ray story was nonsense, and this was more likely to be parthenogenesis. We've spoken on Shark Bites before about parthenogenesis, but just before we do, I'd really quickly like to talk to you about today's video sponsor. I know, Shark Bites has got its first sponsor. What a time to be alive. Slight side note, you wouldn't believe the amount of sponsorship requests I have turned down up until this point, but with a name like Surfshark, they couldn't possibly be more on brand for the channel. Sponsorship is one of the best ways for me to start producing better content for you all. So if you want to support me as a creator here on YouTube, please do have a listen. So yes, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark, the coolest way to surf the World Wide Web. Surfshark is undoubtedly one of the best VPNs on the market. If you've never heard of a VPN before, it stands for Virtual Private Network, and it basically encrypts all your information sent between your computer and the internet so that no one can steal your personal data. 
either because everyone hates that. Although one of the biggest reasons that I like using Surfshark is that this app and browser extension allows you to virtually migrate across oceans with just a single click. Kind of like a highly migratory shark. With Surfshark, I can watch some of my favorite shark films on streaming platforms like Netflix, which is great for those Shark Bites movie commentaries. Sometimes the pesky CEOs for these streaming platforms want to stop you from watching things because of country acquired exclusive rights, which sucks. How am I supposed to binge watch the two Meg films back to back if they're not on Netflix UK? Well, with a single click of my trackpad, I go onto Surfshark, switch my region to the US and bam, I've got Jason Statham skewering a Megalodon with a giant toothpick right in my front living room. Shut up, Meg. But if you're already over in the States and you're thinking to yourself, I don't need this, I'm already here. I've got all the shark films I could ever want. You are not safe. There will be shark films at some point in time exclusive to the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and you'll be stranded. Left to watch Pink Fong and Baby Shark Space Adventure. <laughs> What is that? Surfshark, I've got a whole bunch of features that just make surfing the internet safer, blocking malicious websites or cookie pop-up ads, and you've even got a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's a win-win-win. Sometimes as well, when I'm out and about working on Shark Bites videos in a cafe or a library, Surfshark encrypts all of my online data, so that keeps me safe on public Wi-Fi networks. But without a doubt, best of all, if you use the code SHARKBITES, that's gonna get you an extra four months completely free. So make sure you pop in that Shark Bites discount code via the link in the description. It's right at the top. You can't miss it. Charlotte the Stingray, however, hasn't really got time for surfing at the moment because she's about to give birth via Parthenogenesis. Or is she? Parthenogenesis sounds complicated, but it's not too bad. I'll give you guys a brief breakdown on it. There's a few different animals within the animal kingdom that have been documented as performing virgin births. Some snake species, Komodo dragons, and a fair few insects and fish have undergone parthenogenesis before, including some sharks and rays, but within sharks and rays, it's still very, very rare. This asexual form of reproduction allows some animals to pass on their genes without using up a load of energy trying to find a mate. And this can be helpful for for a species that finds itself in some kind of challenging conditions. As of February 2024, California round stingrays were not on that list of elasma ranks that perform parthenogenesis, but Charlotte the stingray was perhaps about to be the latest addition to that list. And that's what was put forwards by the scientific community, a solid theory that has some decent backing, a rarity perhaps, but not an impossibility. After being challenged, the aquarium initially hit back by saying, well, scientists don't know everything, can we make new discoveries all the time? Which in the broader context is kind of true. Scientists don't know everything and we do continually make new discoveries. But when you narrow it down to this specific incident, it kind of comes off as if you're doubling down after you've been told what you said was categorically wrong. <laughs> and that's kind of what the aquarium did, although perhaps not very brazenly. Over the coming weeks, Brenda Raymer and the aquarium started to slowly drift away from the shark paternity theory in the comment sections of their posts, but they never came out to fully retract those original comments. They didn't hold their hands up and say, oops, we messed up. This isn't some kind of shark ray hybrid, presumably because they thought that if they did that, it might hurt their credibility. In my opinion, holding your hands up when you've 100% made a mistake is way better for your credibility than just ignoring what you said altogether. But that's just me. A number of scientists and aquarium owners reached out to Brenda and ECCO to perhaps advise that the stingray needed a bit more medical attention from an aquarium vet. One of whom was Larry Bowles, director of the aquarium science program at Oregon Coast Community College. Larry had reached out directly to the aquarium and had also been commenting on their social media posts, but soon found out that he'd actually been blocked by their pages. Other scientists who were commenting on their pages, who politely cast doubts on the story, were also being blocked as well. It seemed as if Brenda and the ECCO simply didn't want to hear from anyone who wasn't buying into the story. And importantly here, didn't want other people reading those doubtful comments. As this was going on, Charlotte soon had an Amazon wishlist page full of items that she wanted for a nursery in preparation for having her pups. We Love Charlotte t-shirts became available in the aquarium gift shop and online. The donation page of the website was jazzed up. And although I can't be sure, I imagine the money started to roll in. Speaking of self-publicity and profiteering, if you're enjoying this video so far, please do give it a like. <laughs> God, that was bad. Anyway, these merchandise posts from the aquarium though were intertwined with bog standard updates about Charlotte, mainly her swimming around in a tank and posts about what she had eaten for dinner. How riveting. Some of the Facebook posts though were clearly targeting people to come and visit the aquarium. This one here amongst other things says that Charlotte has been very interested in her visitors. 
that's bait. The story itself, though, brought people into the town from all parts of the country, desperate to get a glimpse at the now famous stingray. One resident even said the traffic on the street leading up to the aquarium was often jammed for nearly half a block. The aquarium was clearly doing pretty well from all this publicity. As time went on through March and into April, Charlotte was yet to give birth to these miracle pups, and fans started to grow a bit restless. The aquarium was asking people to be patient via social media, stating there was no data that gives a specific gestation time for a shark or a ray that has performed parthenogenesis. Based on their own timeline, Charlotte became pregnant in September, and the normal gestation period for a California round ray is about three to four months. And while parthenogenesis can throw off gestation time slightly, it doesn't throw it off for months and months on end. Come April time, Charlotte had supposedly been pregnant for six or seven months, nearly double the length of time for a normal California round ray pregnancy. And with each new social media post, the story changed a little bit each time. Charlotte suddenly had a strange ulcer. The number of pups dropped down from three or four to one. Things just weren't adding up. One scientific journalist who didn't quite buy into the story decided to head to the aquarium and check it out for herself. After asking if she could interview some of the staff inside, she was told no, and then just respectfully decided to visit the aquarium as a paying customer instead. After coming out of the aquarium, the journalist decided to interview a couple who were visiting outside, and moments later, she was approached by a Hendersonville police officer who explained that they'd had a call from an unnamed woman about a reporter harassing people inside their aquarium. Later, she'd find out that aquarium owner Brenda Raymer wanted the police officers to arrest the journalist for trespassing. The police officers didn't arrest the journalist in the end, but they did say to her if she went back into the aquarium, they'd have absolutely no choice but to arrest her. That's a pretty wild encounter for someone just trying to ask a few questions about a stingray in an aquarium. <laughs> Time went on and more social media posts followed, saying that Charlotte was being examined by vets and that multiple images had been taken and were being reviewed. No one could find any information as to who these vets were and some had suggested an aquarium vet called Rob Jones in Australia had been consulted, but he was proving difficult to contact. Everyone was completely in the dark. Then, as quickly as it all started, everything came to a crashing halt. A couple of weeks ago, the aquarium posted an update that Charlotte had developed a rare reproductive disease and that had negatively impacted her reproductive system. And that was it. Charlotte the Stingray's pregnancy was no more. Rob Jones, the Australian aquarium vet who reportedly examined the ultrasound images, did an interview with the Daily Fail, claiming that he'd advised ECTO that Charlotte could be pregnant, but never said that she categorically was. He said that he'd asked aquarium owner Brenda Raymer whether there was any movement in the ultrasound footage, but claimed that he never got a reply. Brenda eventually decided to do an interview with WLOS stating that Charlotte was not pregnant, but at the same time claimed that she was not a liar and that it wasn't a scam. I don't know about you guys, but generally you very rarely have to say this was not a scam when something wasn't a scam. <laughs> but that right there is your third red flag. Strike, you're out. We'll obviously never know whether this was some massive marketing ploy or not, but there are a few signs that perhaps point to it being that way. There's too many things that don't quite add up and not a lot of openness from the aquarium about what was happening behind closed doors. But one of the easiest things they could have done was literally had a blood test taken, which would have shown whether Charlotte was about to give birth based on hormone levels within that blood. I'm pretty sure that would have been directly suggested to them at some point, but it was just ignored. And you've got to ask yourself there, why was it ignored? As of currently, the aquarium has decided to close its doors completely to the public upon advice from their medical team. As to exactly when or if they reopen again remains to be seen. Lots of people did point out though on social media that the aquarium itself didn't look great in terms of its animal welfare. Lots of their exhibits were supposedly unlabeled, which is slightly strange if your purpose is to educate the public about marine life and other people had reported run-ins or uncomfortable encounters with members of staff. The sad reality here though is that there are probably lots of aquariums like ECCO dotted around America and different parts of the world, which appear to be more like sideshows as opposed to actual accredited safe spaces for captive marine animals. The animal welfare laws in North Carolina currently prevent any authorities from stepping in to ensure the safety of the aquarium's inhabitants. Because those laws, as it stand, only apply to mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians. They don't apply to fish. Even if this story does turn out to be one big massive 
massive hoax, perhaps it can shine a light on some of the issues surrounding those aquariums, like ECCO, that don't have to adhere to those accreditation standards. Because there's a hell of a lot of those kind of aquariums out there, and if we're going to keep marine animals in captivity like this, it's got to be done in the right way. So this story remains somewhat as a mystery. I'm sure some more information will eventually come out though. Big thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out the link in the description and use that Shark Bites discount code. But if you did enjoy the mystery surrounding today's episode, then I've got an even better mystery for you guys to sink your teeth into in this video right here. In it, you'll hear a clip of a whale shark supposedly making a noise that almost sounds like it's roaring. It's pretty wild. So make sure you check it out here where you can find out whether sharks truly are capable of making any noise. Slight spoiler alert for you, some of them can.